In case you're tuning in for the first time, let me catch you up. You see, the other day my kooky Aunt Murgatroyd sent my friend Molly and I a mysterious package. She said it was a time machine. We didn't believe her at first. Boy, were we wrong. Then she recruited us to be part of a secret order of problem solvers who travel through time and space solving riddles and puzzles created by the troublesome trolls. They're like the bad guys. Anyway, now every day is one big adventure as Molly and I use math and logic to try and solve mysteries about true histories. Fun fact, time traveling makes you hungry. Really hungry. Wait, I have an idea. Pizza! Hey, I've got a coupon from the last time we ordered. We can get one 18-inch pizza for $20 or two 12-inch pizzas for $19. Two pizzas it is, one for each of us. (coughs) Relax, you can have some of my crust, Rufus. (coughs) Now, where did I put my phone? Hold on. Before you call, let's think this through. Why? You want something other than pizza? No, I'm thinking the one 18-inch pizza is a better deal. How could that be? We get two 12-inch pizzas. That's 24 inches! Right, but you gotta think about the area of the pie, not just the diameter. Oh boy, can you figure this out quickly? I'm starving! Just listen. The area of a pizza is pi r squared. But since the equation is the same for both the 12-inch and the 18-inch, we can forget about pi. I don't want to forget about pi. I'm starving. Let's order. No, not pizza pi. Pi is in the constant used to find the area of a circle, often shortened to 3.14. Anyway, forget about that. Instead, let's look at the radius of each pi. Of course, the radius of a circle is the length from the edge to the center. For the 18-inch pizza, that means a radius of... I know! Nine. Exactly. And if you square nine, you get... Um, 81? Nice! Now, take the 12-inch pie. The radius of that would be six. Square six, and you get... 36. Right. We'd each get 36 square inches of pizza. But if we split the other one, we'd each get half of 81 square inches, which is 40.5 square inches of pizza. That's more pizza. Hmm. But you said it was a better deal. That two pies cost a dollar less. True. So add the areas of the two pizzas together. That's 36 plus 36. That equals 72 square inches of pizza. Now divide $19, the price of the two pies. Buy 72 and you get 26 cents a square inch. But if you divide $20, the price of one pizza, by 81, it comes out to about 25 cents a square inch. Wow. By getting one pie, we get more pizza for less money per square inch. You're a genius, Molly. Hi. I'd like to order one cheese pizza, please. I have a coupon. Pizza's here. Easy, slow down. You're going to eat the box. If it has cheese on it, I don't care. Hey, what's that tape to the bottom of the box? Probably another coupon. We're on to your sneaky deals, Jesus crust pizzeria. Though your sauce is heavenly. Mmm. Nope, it's not a coupon. It's a note from Aunt M. I swear, she's a witch! What does it say? Get Newton's apple in the tree, or else there won't be gravity. Ooh! What? What are you thinking? I could totally go for some fig Newtons, too. I think she's referring to Isaac Newton. Didn't he invent fig Newtons? No! He's known for creating calculus, laws of motion, and a theory of gravity. He was one smart cookie. But he didn't invent any cookies? No! Come on, finish eating. We've got our next mission. Here, Rufus. Have my crust. Here we are. The Wolsthorpe Manor in 1665, England. 
Is this where we're supposed to find? Excuse me, who might I ask are you two? Hi, I'm Max, and this is Molly. We were sent here to... I'm sure I don't care. You may leave now. Oh. Excuse me, Mr. Newton? Say, you aren't with those other urchins who came by the other day, are you? No. Good. I had to run them off. They kept talking to me about a tremendous opportunity, something about traveling through time. Really? What did you tell them? Nunya. Nunya? Is that Latin? It's Nunya business. Speaking of time, mine is important. Please go. Mr. Newton, please. We were sent by, um, Cambridge University to write an article on you and everything you're up to. What are you up to? Cambridge, eh? Wants to know about me. Hmm. Sure. Everyone wants to know what the amazing genius Newton is working on. <laughs> I haven't been back to Cambridge since they closed due to the bubonic plague last year. Instead, I've been living here at my mother's manor. Can you believe she said I should become a farmer? A farmer? Ooh, maybe you could grow figs. <laughs> no, thanks. Instead, I invented calculus. You see, I wanted to figure out the motion of the planets, and there wasn't any math that could do it. So, I invented some. Unbelievable! Why is that so unbelievable? Do you find me incapable? No, I mean, it's just incredible that someone could invent an entirely new form of math. Oh, in that case, I agree. Um, I hate to ask a silly question, but what is calculus? <sighs> My sweet, simple boy. Allow me to explain. Quite simply, calculus is a means to measure rates of change. For instance, say you are riding a horse, and your distance from home changes each minute. Using my calculus formula, called a derivative, you, uh, more likely me, can figure out where something is and where it is going in relation to time. Say, are you interested in traveling back in time? My dear, I'm afraid time flies like an arrow. And fruit flies like a banana. If you'll excuse me, I must go. Oh, uh, where are you going? If you really must know, I was headed to the apple orchard. I like to sit under a shady tree while my brain unravels the mysteries of the universe. Okay. Have fun. Later. Psst. Max. Psst. What? The apple orchard. That's the clue, remember? Get Newton's apple in the tree, or else there won't be gravity. Look at all the trees in the apple orchard. Yeah. What about them? What don't you see? Um, well, they don't seem to have many apples. Exactly. Newton's ideas about gravity were first inspired by his observing a falling apple. No apple, no gravity. Oh. I think the trolls picked every apple in order to keep Newton from forming his theory of gravity. I think you're right. So, we gotta drop apples on him, but how? I don't know. But let's head over and see what we can do. Excuse me, Mr. Newton. I must say, this is a lovely estate. Thank you. I'll let Mother know. Say, besides calculus, what else have you been up to? The usual fun stuff. Math, physics, catapults. Catapults? They're perfect for flinging things across great distances. Anywho, I'll be under that tree if you need me. But I'm hoping you won't. Hey, look! He dropped something. It's a torn sheet of parchment. It's dated two days from today at sunrise. There's a row of numbers. 52, 56, 68, 53, and 60. And it says, At Stonehenge, the number of smaller stones in a circle is three times the number of larger stones. The rest of the page is ripped. Do you think this is from the troublemaking trolls? Could be. They probably want Newton to join them. We should visit Stonehenge to see what they're plotting. But first, we gotta make Newton see a falling apple. There he is, sitting under his appleless apple tree. What do we do? There's a few apples on the ground. We could just climb the tree and drop one on him. Won't he see us? What if I just throw it? It's too far. We're more mathlete than athlete. Speak for yourself. I could totally reach him from here. Watch. Yeah. Not even close. Wait, I know. Catapults! There's one on top of that hill. Quick, hand me an apple. 
Okay, so an apple can fall far from the tree. Another. Ow! That was my head. Whoops. Sorry. I think I've got the range dialed in now. <laughs> nope. Last apple. Here, let me try. Ouch! Nice shot, Molly. What goes up must come down thanks to gravity. Boom! Mission accomplished. Let's head home and finish that pizza. Wait, what about the paper we found with the numbers on it? Oh, that. Isaac Newton said that people were trying to recruit him for something. I'm sure they were trolls. And this paper might lead us to their next plot to mess with the world. Yep. So what are you saying? We need to get to Stonehenge. Did you say Stonehenge? Ah! Isaac, you startled me. Sorry, but what's this about Stonehenge? We need to go there to, uh... uh solve a math-related problem. Who knows, it might even require calculus. Math problems? Calculus? That's right up my alley. May I join you? Um, sure. We were just discussing how to get there. We can use my carriage. It's about eight hours away. Plenty of time for me to dazzle you with my new insights about gravity. Great. Great. This is going to be a long trip. And that's the method of fluxions, part eight of 32. Please make it stop. Oh, look, Stonehenge. Finally! Finally. As you may or may not know, Stonehenge is an ancient prehistoric monument consisting of massive stones arranged in a circle, believed to have been constructed for ceremonial or astronomical purposes. Gotcha. The question is, how do we solve this riddle? Let me see it again. Hmm. 52, 56, 68, 53, and 60. At Stonehenge, the number of smaller stones in a circle is three times the number of larger stones. Well, here at Stonehenge, some of the stones were given names, like lintels, heel stone, slaughter stone. Slaughter stone? Sick! While others were given numbers. The numbers on your paper are the same as the numbers used to name some stones. Ooh, interesting. These stones have an energy to them. It's almost like I can feel the trolls lurking in the shadows. I know what you mean. Oof, it's certainly hotter than expected here. Mm. Whoa, stop! What? What are you about to wipe your forehead with? Just some parchment that's in my pocket. Mind if I take a peek at that? Aha! It's the other half of the page! The total number of stones in the circle is 80. How many stones are there of each type? Then it says bottom center. Great. Now we have two equations we can't solve. Ah, but maybe one of history's greatest mathematicians can. Say, Mr. Newton, would you mind helping us figure out this puzzle? Sure. Hmm. You seem to have two unsolvable equations here. I know, I just said that. Never mind, let's go home. However, they can be solved together. They can? Sure. They're actually something called system equations. We can solve them as a system. Look what the first part says. At Stonehenge, the number of smaller stones in a circle is three times the number of larger stones. That can be turned into one equation. The number of smaller stones, let's call them S, are equal to three times the number of larger stones, call them L. So the first equation is S equals 3L. Okay. And then we know the total number of stones is 80, which means when you add small stones S to large stones L, you get 80 total stones. In equation form, that would be S plus L equals 80. Now what? We substitute. Precisely. We know S equals 3L, so swap 3L for S in the equation S plus L equals 80. That gives us 3L plus L equals 80 which is the same as saying 4L equals 80. Then divide both sides by 4. Which means L equals 20. There are 20 large stones. 
And since there are three times as many small stones, three times 20 equals 60 small stones. My guess is, whatever you're looking for is at the base of stone number 60, which happens to be the one you're standing near, Molly. Do you see anything? I'm not sure. Wait, under that stone, there's a note. Let me see if I can pull it out. Nice job. What does it say? It says, there are X clues. You've already found four. X clues? How many is that? I don't know. I guess we have to solve for X. Oof. Isn't that like algebra? Yeah, but that's not even the problem. How can we solve for X when there's no other information? No idea. Maybe Isaac Newton knows. Mr. Newton? Mr. Newton? Where did he go? His carriage is gone. He ghosted us. Look, there's a note. Another note? What's with all the notes? Sorry, m M&M, m but now that your riddle is solved, the gravity of the situation regarding gravity requires my full attention. See you soon. Oh, well. But he's right. Gravity is a big deal. But he's also wrong. We haven't solved our riddle. In fact, it's just begun. Maybe so. But there's only one thing I can think of. Pizza! Hey, where'd all the pizza go? Rufus! Mm. Hi, can we get another 18-inch pie, please? This episode of Mysteries About True Histories was written by Adam Markowitz and voiced by Dexter Danger Mayo, Molly Smith, and Jonathan Regier. Original music by Brian Suarez. Our associate producer is Max Kamaski. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. The executive producers are Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert from Atomic Entertainment. And Jed Baker and Agaranish A. Palmer from Starglow Media. Mysteries About True Histories is a Starglow Media and Atomic Entertainment production. Grown-ups, looking for ad-free audio fun for the whole family? Subscribe to Starglow Plus on Apple or wherever you get your podcasts. Learn more at starglowmedia.com slash subscribe. Catch you on the next Mysteries About True Histories.